Hey guys, let's, uh, let's talk about the Spartan. You can see I'm doing some work on it. And uh, just like I thought, you could take parts off your 99K and put it on your Spartan. So if you want just a black machine and not have to worry about the decals wearing off of your bed or off of your machine anywhere, get yourself a Spartan. Yeah, okay, the bob and winder is different, but hey, look, the 99K bob and winder is on here. And now, I'm about to put a stitch length indicator on here. Alright, there's the one from the Spartan, it's hard to see, but it says 192K right there. And it says back stitch on it, which is sort of a nice touch. I polished up the one off the 99K. Nice thing is, it doesn't say 99 on it. So, who's going to know that this is even off of a 99 unless you know that the Spartan doesn't have that, right? Now, I've put these two plates one over the other, and you can see they are perfectly identical, the same size. The only difference is, is this slot right here to accommodate this pin, okay? See this pin here? Now, it's just a pin. It's not threaded or anything. It's got a spring on it, and the spring has a... Uh, little taper on the end so it doesn't come off. I'll try to see if you guys can see the end there. See the shape of the end there and the spring. See how the spring is and this would slide onto the spring and this end is not threaded okay because you can sort of see it. I'll get my flashlight out here and show you guys and give me this paintbrush. See that little hole right there? That is where that indicator goes and right beside it is a threaded hole where your stitch length would go, right? Your stitch length uh, lever. So there you go. This piece inside of a Spartan is the same as a 99K, and you can put the dial on there. So give me one second. I'm going to get the dial sat in here, and I'm going to get the plate on and uh, show you guys that. Here, I'll show you guys quickly this pin going on. Just in case you do this conversion, you can see this pin is not threaded and it just threads into, try to get my light here so you guys can see, just threads into that, or pushes into that hole, sorry, see, and it's spring loaded now. So it's spring, spring tension there, all right? And what that does is that pushes against the back of this plate over here and uh, keeps the dial um, flush with the plate as it goes up and down because this actual arm in here it sort of swings it doesn't move um, evenly and the reason it does that is so that when you're setting your stitch and you turn in the big chrome dial it will bottom out by hitting this plate and as you lift it the uh, lever comes away from the plate and as you bring it down it gets closer to the plate okay so the dial has to be able to go in and out as it goes up and down and that's why it's spring loaded and not threaded it needs to go in and out of that hole and uh, in order to move up and down in this slot okay guys so it wouldn't be a bad idea to maybe just wet your finger with a little bit of oil and wet that rod that goes into that hole that way you're lubing that hole because there's no way to lube that inside of there so anyways let me get this plate on get the screws in and then uh, I'll go on from that point Okay guys, so I got these two screws started. I haven't screwed them in all the way yet. And uh, just to let you guys know, when you're putting on a plate like this, because it's on a contour, you're gonna wanna hand thread these uh, and get them both started, you know, four or five turns in each, you know, by hand. Like I always say, screw your screws in by hand at first. If they don't feel like they're going in, then there's obviously something wrong, okay? So I'm gonna finish tightening these up now that I have the plate in place. My spring tension dial indicator is in there. And uh, I'm just gonna finish tightening these up. Now these screws don't need to be terribly tight, so I won't be using that uh, ratchet tool that I use to crack them free, okay? Um, this, this tool here is what I use to crack my screws free, uh, especially on a machine that's been sitting a long time. And then I use a screwdriver, okay? But when I'm putting them back in, I'll just use a nice little screwdriver, make sure it's got a nice 
sharp, clean edge so it fits the screw properly. And that's it. All right. So anyways, that screws in. And I got my stitch length indicator here. Now I'm going to talk quickly about the differences on these because yeah, they look the same, don't they? They're not. The one on the Spartan is actually um, milled down a little bit more here. So this stands a little bit more proud than this one. Also, the knurling on the one from the Spartan is a lot more grippy. I like the feel of the one off of the Spartan. The one off of the 99K, I'm not sure if it's worn down or not, but it's pretty smooth. Also, it's hard to see on my camera, but the lip here is thicker than the lip on this one. So they are actually different. These two are different. They're the same length, and they both fit the same screws, because I did take the screw from the Spartan, uh, this part, and put it on the screw from the 99, because the original Spartan lever was actually bent. Okay, it, and now that screw sits in here. This one is the, uh, the original. So I'm going to screw this in now, and I know where this goes because of where that little dot is, is where the arm is, and it just points right in there. Now, don't screw this in by this. I, you just see me do that. That's just to get it started, all right, because I've threaded the long screw all the way down into this um, chrome piece you see here. And now that I've started it with a few threads, I'll put my screwdriver in there and you screw this in until it bottoms out. All right. And then once it bottoms out, what I usually do, if I can get this in here, or what I have done with the practice I do, is once it bottoms out, if I keep turning that in, and if I keep my screwdriver on the slot, there we go. As soon as it bottoms out, that's it. Okay. And then I'll hold the screwdriver just to crack that that this free again because I did tighten that screw down and now I crack that free now this is set okay now I can thread that in and I can bring that up and lock it I, just, I locked myself out but anyways there you go I have to turn that back out I had that locked in there so there it is now I can actually see what stitch I am running on my stitch length um, indicator all right guys so there you go you can use this off of a 99k if you want to be able to tell because on here you really can't tell yeah you got to try to look at where the um, threaded part of the the arm is and try to gauge exactly where it is but on the 99 it actually pinpoints literally pinpoints it to where what setting you're at on here okay and it is the same just so you guys know these markings are all the same uh, distance on the plates so you can use them all right guys that was it just wanted to show you the two things that I changed on my Spartan to make it a 99 now Spartans don't have a light this one had one on it when I got it but it would be three things to make this the same as a 99 a light a automatic bobbin winder and a stitch length indicator well four things I guess the motor I didn't think about it because that 99 I got has a 0.8 on it anyways guys I appreciate you watching and uh, stay tuned for upcoming videos on my vintage sewing machines appreciate you guys watching stay safe stay tuned